So hi, welcome to Grown Ups Podcast. I'm Shane. I'm Glory. And we're here with. I'm Alan. And I'm Dan. And we're in Four Years Strong. And we're gonna some some questions say about the upcoming album Analysis Paralysis. So congrats on that. By the way, how do you guys feel about the response to the announcement so far? Uh, it's been uh, great. So far, so good. Yeah, yeah, it's been really awesome. So far, so good. You know. Hell yeah, the album yeah. fucking rips. Yes, we we got an advance of it, and I'm not gonna bullshit you. First listen of the album, it landed on my album of the year list. So you're oh, you're yeah. in the running. You're in the running. All right, yeah. I love yeah. that. That's awesome. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. That's really cool. Hell yeah. Of course. Thank Glad you. you guys are stoked on it. Yeah. Hell yeah. Uh, so, is there any meaning behind the album title or cover art? Um, there is. I mean, yes. There's a kind of a lot of meaning. How we came up with the album title was like not necessarily like like it kind of happened by accident because uh, a little bit of a long story but we were trying to figure out what to call the album and we have we were really excited about our last album that was mm-hmm. called brain pain mm-hmm. and it kind of just happened at a really bad time in the world because it came out in march of 2020 yeah. or end of february and then obviously we all know what happened then mm-hmm. and we never really got to tour on the album so we have this kind of like hole in our heart where that whole album cycle once was mm-hmm. and we were joking about calling this album brain pain part two um <laughs> i mean we were just really joking i don't think that would have ever actually happened but okay. we were just like you know we yeah. didn't get we didn't get to live in it the way we wish so let's just like start it over brain pain part two and Mm -hmm. we just started talking about things like that and at one point we were on a call about it and i said uh i think i I like interrupted and was like "Ah." honestly at this point it could be freaking anything and i have a little bit of analysis paralysis about like the decision making here Mm -hmm. and the ben the uh, art director at, uh, for the album he chimed in and was like that's what you should call the album and we were like interesting okay mm-hmm. huh. interesting i love it's out it. of fucking nowhere yeah 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 hmm, terrific and the yeah cover. it has the like double rhyme thing it's fun yeah yeah and it kind of feels like a brain pain part two because it's got the double rhyme name thing it just kind of it carries on that that aesthetic of brain pain analysis paralysis it kind of it plays both sides which i did see a couple like people comment that like that it had similarities to the brain pain so people are picking up on it and that was the goal i guess so yeah. Oh, wonderful yeah. yeah and any meaning behind um, the cover art um and the uh, the, the uh, yeah the album art mm-hmm. um Basically, I think we we were we were really up in the air of what we wanted to do. I don't think we even had like a clear idea of what we wanted the record to look like at all. Like we, you know, we 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 kind of were were, were looking just trying to find some inspiration. And Alan came across this artist uh, called Blatant Spaces. Is it Spaces or Space? I can't remember. Al. Space. I think it's Spaces. Blatant Space. Yeah, okay. Blatant Space. Uh, and we just loved the aesthetic of, and we loved the, the vibe of, he, he kind of does this art that's kind of based around these like creatures or weird, like humanoid things, like almost like Muppety kind of things. And we loved the vibe of it because every single one had this like, you know, unease, this uncanny Valley, this like really strange feeling. And that's kind of what a lot of the, the, the lyrics on the record have to do with is just kind of that, you know, that being uncomfortable in life experiences because everybody goes through that. We go through that. Everybody just has to deal with that. And a lot of the the lyrics ended up having a lot of those themes of just, just being a little off and being a little bit uncomfortable and being a little bit just weird in certain aspects of life. And I, the artwork, as soon as we all saw it now, was like, what about this? We were all like, Oh, that's awesome. Um, and then we ended up going through Alan, I think, went through and picked out like a bunch of them. And then we all kind of went through the ones Alan picked and picked our favorites. And then we 
basically licensed them from a guy. We, we bought them from a guy. Hell yeah. You guys yeah, definitely yeah. capsulated the unease with the album yeah. title yeah. or with the album art. Because, like, looking at it, I get, like, an uneasy feeling just, like, <laughs> looking into the eyes of the dog on the cover art. The goofy-ass dog, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that that's kind of what spoke to us about it when we first saw it. And we've always kind of had trouble visually representing our music because it, more so in a sense of like, we don't know how to describe to an artist who has the skill of bringing it to life because we don't really do that. We We know how to do that with music. If we have this like blurry vision of it in our head, bringing that to life with music is like, so much more doable than the visual aspect of it and we had hired a couple uh artists um before we landed on this to design some stuff that we just des described what we wanted and they did their version of our description and we realized are we just describing it completely wrong because this isn't what i pictured at all mm -hmm. kind of stuff so then when we came across these images just as is we didn't have to describe it to anyone we saw it and loved it we we're like that i want that oh yeah, yeah that's awesome love at first sight yeah. yeah um so can you guys tell us a little bit about your writing process for the album it, the writing process was pretty tough honestly it was we kind of we knew we had a date booked to go into the studio and record the album and we knew with plenty of lead time what we needed to do to prepare to do that but i think because of our you know no pun intended our analysis paralysis about following up an album that we were really excited about with brain pain in 2020 mm -hmm. we just didn't really know what to do and we just we had a lot of guitar riffs and a lot of like seed ideas but no songs written and we kind of realized that we just needed to go into the studio with no songs and instead of recording the album use that as an opportunity to like lock ourselves in a space and write the album um there was one or two songs that were kind of written before but we wrote most of it within a month wow um, wow being in the studio um and yeah dan and i just it was just the two of us and will putney the producer um was popping in and out as well but just like me and dan at this point in our lives we have so many things going on at home that it's so hard to dedicate the time to writing music when you know in between tours we want to be spending time with family and stuff like that it's so hard for like life to just kind of get in the way of the creativity that like takes a lot of time to get right mm -hmm. um so it just we just had to do it we just had to get in a room and do it and that's what it took is locking us in this studio yeah yeah and yeah wow to add to add on to kind of what Alan said, we had spent a lot of time before that, uh, before going into the studio and obviously doing some while we were in the studio, just kind of talking about what we wanted the record to be and just kind of more or less just we kind of knew what the vibe that we wanted was similar to the artwork where we, we knew what we, we wanted, even though we couldn't necessarily see a clear picture of it. So when we went into studio, we didn't have any songs, but we still kind of had a little bit of like a North Star as far as like the kind of vibe that we were going for. Mm -hmm. um, so, and, and well, honestly, that vibe was a little bit, it kind of, it, it was a little all over the place, but we still knew what we wanted to do. We knew we wanted like, we, we had been working on some riffs that were a little bit heavier and we were working on riffs that were a little bit, you know, more musically and melodically inclined so we we kind of had a little bit of an idea it basically just took us you know getting in the room and actually putting you know on the paper and pick the guitar to actually start you know getting some of the solid ideas out gotcha oh yeah so like well obviously there's a lot going on but like creatively were you guys just having a hard time like moving on from brain pain and that's why it was like ultimately you had to get in the studio to 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 start writing i think I it was mean, it was a lot a lot of what alma's saying is that a lot of life was getting in the way of us getting together so we never were able to really think into the process 
um, you know, we would get together every once in a while for a couple hours and we, we would actually make like a little bit of progress and come up with a thing, but then it'd be like, all right, cool. I have my kids are coming home from school now. So I got to go be with them or Alan had like a studio thing or, or like every, you know, we just had things that we had to do. So it kind of kept us from really getting into any sort of flow as far as writing goes. And that's always the time where Alan and I make the most progress is when we kind of get into this slow state of just, you know, making music and, 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 and just continuing on like, Oh, this song's done. Okay. Let's just go right on to the next song. And that's what we ended up being able to do in the studio was actually just focus on nothing else, but the music. And we did, we did have a lot of pressure on ourselves, Mm -hmm. not necessarily external pressure necessarily, but we were just so happy with how brain pain came out. And like, it was kind of a turning point in us, like emotionally, I think Mm -hmm. with the band, um, that I think we were just hard on ourselves. Like, well, it's gotta be better than that. It can't be worse. Yeah. You know? So we just kind of got in our own heads about it too. I think. Mm-hmm. Makes sense. Gotcha. And was there any added pressure or anxiety going into the studio with like absolutely nothing prepared and having just a one month time limit? Like we have to have an album ready and done by the end of the month or else like when well, are we going to find the time? Well, we didn't exactly do it that way. What okay. What ended up happening was we had that month booked to record the album. Mm-hmm. And basically we just didn't tell Will, the producer, that like, uh, until like a week before even though we knew <laughs> um, that it was kind of a change of plans we're mm-hmm. still coming to the studio but we're not recording we're mm-hmm. just writing yeah and then we ended up doing another month ish gotcha okay where okay. we record I mean it was kind of a hybrid we were doing some recording we were doing a lot of preparation but mm-hmm. like we did the proper recording separate from that month we just okay. basically had to trick will into spending more time with us because we needed it yeah <laughs> yeah pull the fast one mm. yeah exactly yeah. fuck yeah so what song off the album took longest to write and which one is each of your own personal favorite i know which one took the longest to write dan do you know which one i'm thinking uh which one took the longest to write what uh, uh... It could be uh, out of touch, maybe. No, of course, no. I can't remember which one took the longest. Right, sucks to fall in love. I don't know. No, it was dead end friend. Oh, I guess that's true. That one took the longest to write, but also we wrote it in like fifteen minutes. So like, okay, I don't true. Even think but about like you know what I mean? Like so... <laughs> it, it took the longest to write because we wrote it a bunch of different times. Oh, okay, we kept okay. the music. Kept... Yeah. the music and and the lyrics we like tried to write a chorus to it a bunch of times and there was there at one point like they, we did one final three-day weekend at the studio to like wrap up the whole record mm-hmm. and include that was including recording all the writing and recording the vocals for two songs oh. um yeah and those two songs were dead end friend and uh better better get better, better, better get, get better. better yeah yeah um and we had better get better pretty much written we, but well, we didn't we just couldn't get well, dead and we, friend done and we decided to just scrap it and then yeah. the last day we were there we w- we woke up a little earlier than will or he was doing something with his wife or something yeah and, he was, yeah, yeah yeah and me and dan were just like all right, let's give this, let's try and write this song, this chorus one more time. Like we just, we hadn't nailed it. And it was just kind of like this Hail Mary. Mm-hmm. And Will comes downstairs and we showed him. And he was like, fuck yeah, it's awesome. Let's record it. So we, re- so it was, it wasn't that it took the longest to write. It just like went through so many phases and almost didn't even make, didn't even, all, we almost just ditched it completely. Mm-hmm. And yeah. then, it ended up being the first single that we released off the whole album. Look at yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it was funny because I remember, I remember we made the decision to not finish the song. Like we, we, we did this with another song on brain pain too, that we still have never finished. 
And uh, we were, we're like, you know, we'll just put the song on hold. We'll write it another time. We'll come back up and we'll finish it and record it then. And I remember us having the conversation of like, you know that we're never going to do that, right? Like we're going to say that and then we're never actually going to finish the song. It's just going to go away. And I remember the moment we were walking down the stairs from, from, uh, from like Will's like upper floor down into the studio. And we kind of had, we were, we were celebrating having the morning off a bit because we didn't have anything to do. And Will had something he was, I think someone else was working on music there too. So he was working with somebody else. And so we kind of had the thing off and I remember walking downstairs and us being like, we should just try to take a swing at this song. And I remember both of us going like, Ugh, fuck. <laughs> and then, and we just went downstairs and, and yeah, it just kind of came together very, very quickly. Um, and the whole song was done. I think like maybe like 20, 20, 30 minutes, the, le- the lyrics were done to the song, which yeah. was a relief. Yeah. That's awesome. Hell yeah. I remember st- and I remember recording it was, 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 was hard. I remember your voice was like a little tired from doing better, get better the day before. Oh yeah. So I remember that was like the, that was like the scary thing, right? We were like, we we're like, all right, we have it written. We just have to get it recorded. And we were like going yeah. part by part. We're like, we just got to get these parts out. Yeah, because I just totally lost my voice from like oh. a, a, a long weekend of just singing at the top of our lungs all weekend. Mm-hmm. And yeah. that's always how it goes, right? When you right when you need it the most, that's when it goes. Gone. Yeah. Yeah. When the pressure's on. Oh, yeah. yeah. But your, then, your uh... voice sounds really good on that song, though. So I remember I hated it at first. Like I could hear that my voice was struggling, mm-hmm. but I guess I guess my voice just sounds like shit all the time, so it blended in nicely. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oof! <laughs> no, it's just it's just a case of too close to the art, man. I, I yeah. I've listened yeah. to it a bunch of times. Can't hear a difference. <laughs> and favorites. And then favorites, yeah. My favorites pretty consistently have probably been uncooked and aftermath. I think, yep. but I have a lot of favorites, honestly. It'd be it'd be probably easier to pick least favorites, but <laughs> you know I'd love to hear your least favorite. Oh, I don't know. That's hard too. Because <laughs> they all oh have some, they all have something to like about it. Yeah. yeah. My least favorite, to be to be honest, mm. until I started to realize how much people liked it, because I again had uh, an uneasy feeling about it was dead end friend because yeah. it's, I knew the writing process that it was this total last ditch effort. Mm-hmm. It felt so like, ah, like we, it was a hail Mary and then I lost my voice. So like yeah. it didn't feel like, but I think it was more knowing the process behind it kind of yeah. colored it in a weird way mm-hmm. that, but once people started to hear it, everyone was saying how obvious it was like, Oh, that song's got to go out. And I was like, really, that one? Uh, but now I love it because I've gotten a chance to reflect on it, I think, more the way other people were hearing it, more so, like, especially after playing it live and things like that, more so than my own experiences in recording it. There you oh, go. Yeah. It's fair. Uh, and my favorite songs, uh, Uncooked is definitely up there for me uh, as well. It's super fun to play live. Um, and it's just a really fun song. Uh, and then I really like Maybe It's Me a lot. I'm I'm really excited to play that song. And, and I think that'll be, I don't know, I think that'll be a fun one to like have people sing along. It's one of the, what, one of the things that we tried in this album that Alan and I really haven't done a lot in the past is singing in unison. Mm-hmm. So I think that's going to be really, into, and we do that in that song um, a lot through, uh, through all the verses and stuff. So I'm really excited to see, you know, how that translates live and what people do with it so it'll be fun mm-hmm. hell yeah be pretty fucking cool yeah mm-hmm. um so how did the track list for the album come about did you guys write the opener be the opener close be a closer shuffle around and see what fits what was that process like it was a little bit of a, sh- a shuffle we we kind of put the songs in in a in a like session like a recording session and just kind of moved the files around and see which ones felt good working where mm-hmm. we kind of knew the second we wrote aftermath afterthought that that was probably going to be the opener um but that's about all we knew we kind of had a feeling that uh how do i let you go might be the closer i remember having that conversation yeah. too um just because of the, the the type of song it is and it it lends itself well to being a last song yeah um, yeah it would have killed the vibe yeah, yeah. if you just like threw it in the middle of the record yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, I agree. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So would you guys be able to tell us where your headspace is at while you're creating this record? Oh, man. Confusion. Fusion, stressed out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, kind of like what we were saying, like the obviously staring down, uh, you know, the clock and the time limit ticking down of us only having a certain amount of time to finish writing the record because then we had to go. Um, I, I forget. Did we do the Offspring tour in the middle of the writing and recording? We did, right? Or no, we did the Offspring after the recording. Right after recording, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Um, I don't remember what what it was, but I remember you know we were we could only be there for a certain amount of time. Oh, because Better Lovers was recording, right? Right. Oh. Was the that so they were they literally came in the day after we left mm -hmm. or something like that. So we had to just we only we had a certain had to amount be of time to work. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So that was very stressful, um, but we also did, this was a lot of fun because it literally was just writing music from the beginning of the day until the end of the day. Like I remember we, we would write from like, we would go into the room at like 11 o'clock in the morning and we wouldn't leave the room other than like maybe getting some food. We wouldn't leave the room until like 4 a.m. sometimes. God, we would damn. Just do it. We would just do it consistently like day after day after day. And even if we weren't, even if we weren't like writing, writing, if we were hitting a block, we would just like listen to music and talk and about it, like yeah. talk about what, like, like, just like look for kind of inspiration and places. And it was, it was, it was fun to just like fully just be submerged in the album making process instead of what it's been like for most of our career, which is especially on the writing side of things, obviously anytime we've recorded a record, we spend the time we're in the studio, we have the time booked, but yeah. writing is always a little bit here, a little bit there. And then mm -hmm. we, and then we'll dedicate like a week to kind of organizing all those thoughts before going into the studio. And then that's it. But like really just being submerged in it every day, all day. Mm -hmm. I think that's part of the reason it came out the way it did. And it came out as eclectic as it did, oddly enough, because one we didn't have a ton of time to overthink it yeah and we kind of just let the ideas happen because we knew we didn't have time to like if we got stuck an idea to work for three straight days on that one idea we mm -hmm. would just see the idea through instead of workshopping it even if it was bad mm -hmm. or just move on to the next idea so there was just like lots of like quick committing to things which i personally think is a great way to create anyway yeah um to just kind of go with your gut at all times whether that gut is this is great let's keep going or this is bad but let's just see it through or this is so bad that let's stop now yeah, <laughs> yeah. you know gotcha did, did you guys learn anything about your process like with this record and getting to do it a little differently from previous albums or are you guys looking you know ahead at the next one to kind of do it the way you guys have in the past like broken up writing and obviously the recording is all in one go but writing when the time allows i think i think a bit of a hybrid i think i wouldn't want to wait until the very last second to like get in the studio and have to write an entire record again mm -hmm. yeah but i do like the idea of blocking off time and just doing a full lock-in mm -hmm. to write even even if you're not writing an entire record like writing like you know just writing as many songs as you can get done but in a mm -hmm. in an environment that you just stay submerged in the process um the way that we did because i feel like that's one of the reasons that i think the record has a very broad uh just array of types of songs um, and I think that's because we were writing them so quickly that the next time we would go to start a new song, we'd be like, I want to write something completely different than anything I wrote in the past five days. Yeah. Um, instead of when you're writing a song for when you're writing a record for six months and you're getting together here and there, sometimes you can have songs that end up, you know, having some similarities because you're still chasing this dragon that you maybe didn't 100 percent find when you're writing the other song something like that it just gives you i think you have a little bit more of a of an idea of what you're writing while you're writing it 
um, in, in this aspect. Like we kind of knew like, Oh, we've got, we've got this crazy heavy song. We got this. We're like kind of checking boxes as we went, as we were writing songs. Yeah. Um, where normally you kind of, you don't start doing that until like, like Alan said, like a week before this, the record, you're like, let's see what songs we have. And you just start listening to all the stuff you've written in the past six months. Yeah. And they're like, Oh yeah, I forgot about this one. I forgot about this one. So. Hell yeah. I like that, but I think without the time constraint of, of uh, you know, just having procrastinated to the point of no return. I don't, I don't but, blame you. It happens. But I, I will say, yeah. history has proven that, Dan, we do work yeah. better under pressure. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Though it's miserable at the time mm-hmm. and stressful, but like, we always do get it done. Exactly. Yeah, but you know why? Because there's no Cause... other option. Right. There's no other, there's yeah. no other option, yeah. but like either we get it done or we crash and burn. So we right. just we do. That's true. So when you say you work well under pressure, that's just another way of saying you're really bad at doing it the rest of the time. Right. That's true. <laughs> that is true. Should, that is yeah. that is true, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Um, so how do you guys recommend your fans to listen to this album for the first time should you do a car with friends and dark with headphones on is a workout album party album what do you guys personally recommend that's a good question I don't know mm-hmm. I personally if I'm my preferred listening experience for sure is a pair of like noise canceling really nice sounding headphones mm-hmm. where I can just like completely be immersed in the experience um and lately, I've been on a kick of just like listen, listening to whole albums. I feel like it's been so long. I've been a, a victim to the Spotify playlists and the, yeah. the online radio and just like suggested what I might like. And it ends up turning into white noise because it's just a bunch of stuff I don't really know. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've di- started to dive back into if I'm going to put on something. I try and have it be a whole album that I listen to front to back Um, and doing that in headphones when you don't, it's not the, it's not on in the background where you're doing dishes, where you're missing parts and you know, you really got to be able to hear everything. That's my personal favorite way lately to experience music, but I I don't know to each their own. I, I think, I think this record is a really good, like driving in the car record. Uh, I think it's got some parts that you can just sing really loud with your windows open or closed, whatever you're comfortable with. And uh, I don't know. I think I think the preferred way for you to for you to experience this record is at our shows because it's kind of how we, we kind of wrote it for you to experience it live. Mm-hmm. And um, and so listen to it any way you want, but then actually come experience it like at the shows and part of a group where because every time we wrote a new part we would have this conversation of like okay if i'm in the crowd what do i want to hear what's the next thing that i want to do? what's gonna what's gonna be the most fun thing to happen next um mm-hmm. and that's that was really like a mantra when we were writing this record is we just want each part to just get to just be a more fun version of what you heard before and if if we're bored of a part, then like, oh, it doesn't need to come back. I know that, oh, it's the chorus. We got to do it again. Be like, well, if we did it once and that's enough, then we just don't need it to come back. We just need to keep the ball moving forward and having the song be fun, having it be something wild that, okay, we have to try to jump on this part. Oh, we want to mosh on this part. We want to sing on this part. Um, but yeah, I think, you know, experiencing the record any way that you like, but then coming to the show and seeing us play it live, I think would be, the 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 way to get what we what we what we want you to get out of it you know mm-hmm. hell yeah i'm 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 i'll be there in jersey at at the headlining tour i'm hoping that a good chunk of the record is on the set list mainly paranoia i don't know if you guys had plans sure. to play that song but please <laughs> take it into consideration if you haven't yeah i, I think, love that song we'll probably that do great. that one i know that's that kind of yeah. flies under the radar for me because that's also one of my favorites but I don't know why it does, it's not the first to come to mind whenever I think of the album. Hmm. Fair enough. Makes sense. But maybe that's what makes it a, a good album right now for us because I can't pick a favorite, you know? You exactly. Yeah. And you Evil told us you that's, what I'm hoping, that's what I'm hoping that means. I, or it could also mean that there's no, no, no good songs. 
No, but you oh, also okay. told us you could pick <laughs> oh, your least favorite easily, and then we asked you, and you said, "Well, that's also hard." So yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I agree. I will say that the one thing that I think hopefully bodes well for this record is that every song on the record somebody has told me is their favorite song on the record. So that that always makes me feel good. You know, it always makes me sad when there's a song in the record that nobody likes mm-hmm. except me because I'm like, ah, man, that one could have been better. But everyone is uh, someone has said something about every song on the record. So that makes me feel like we we did a good job doing what we were what our goal was. You know, that's good. For sure. Yeah. So this one should be super, super quick off top of your heads. I want you guys to describe this album for new listeners in three words, three words each, six total, no more, no less. Fun, heavy, and I don't know what the third one is. Fun and heavy and and fun again. (laughs) All right. Fun, heavy, fun. Fun, heavy, fun. All right. Sure. Okay. (laughs) Um. I was also going to say fun and heavy, but so you can do that. do that. So I would say exciting, Ooh. We- weird, Ooh. and fun. Can I there do that? There you go. Yeah. Dan got to say fun go. twice, so I got to say it at least once. Exactly. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> that, was, that was our main goal in writing it, is we just want it to be fun for yeah. us yeah. to write, to play, for people to hear, for people to see live. That's what it was all about. Hell yeah. I think you um, nailed it. And I, I know we've touched on a lot of, you know, the challenges throughout the record, but curious if there's anything else that we haven't touched on, any particularly challenging or standout moments from the creation of the album, positive or negative. I mean, we covered a lot. I I think one of the other thing I think we didn't talk about is that, like, we have had the opportunity to play some of those songs all summer on tour. And what's really exciting for us as a band that's been, together for freaking 20 years over 20 years now uh cool. that to be putting playing songs that are like very new and not out yet like the album's not out yet that they were kind of a highlight of the show like people were excited to hear them people were moving people were singing they were doing exactly what we we envisioned when we wrote the songs so that has just just been such a huge deal for us personally just not even from like a great now we have a hit record because obviously that's not necessarily the case but just doing it as long as we have and getting to go out there after all these years and have the newest material we've written be what people seem to be excited about is just a just an amazing thing for us that's fucking awesome yeah yeah, I think adding on to what Alan said, I totally agree. I mean, Alan and I, especially when we're writing stuff, we do a lot of a lot of like second guessing and a lot of like, is this good? Are people going to like this? We do a lot of that, like, you know, just not being completely sure of ourselves, especially after we're done with the record. When we're writing the record, we're very confident what we're making. And then afterwards, we're like, ah, is there more we could have done? Is there something else? But to have all of that anxiety that I know that both of us have whenever we put out something new and to have it come back from new fans, from old fans, from people who hear it as in such a positive way is such like, there's such an awesome sigh of relief that just happens internally that I know that we don't always feel. So it's really cool to work on something super hard that we've, we've been very anxious about to kind of have a little bit of that, you know, pent up anxiety um, from, from feeling the positivity coming back at us. It's just really cool. Yeah. Oh yeah. Sure. Love it. Sense. So for this question, I want you guys to picture you're on tour. You're at a gas station for a rest stop. You're going in. What is your snack of choice? Can we, can we answer for each other? Sure. I would love if you guys did that. Sure. Uh, I don't even know what you're going to say for me. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. What's all right? My snack of choice. What is it, Al? Um, a gas station. I would say your snack. Of, well, it it kind of depends on what era we're talking about. Like, are we talking ten years ago? Are we talking now? I would probably say you're going to. Oh, be we thought we talking van. Uh, we're talking well, van, van days. I, I have the answer. Yeah, van days. <laughs> I mean. 
we got to talk. That's the time we talk. We stop at gas. We don't really stop at gas stations anymore because we're sleeping when yeah. we're driving. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. I All would right, say so Dan Dan's Dan's a triple X vitamin water mm-hmm. and maybe like a trail mix. Would I be off with that? Yeah, that that would have been that would have been close. Yeah, yeah. Trail mix. That that'd be nice. I'd take that right now. <laughs> you would have been in Van Days. Uh, I don't know about drink, but definitely the powdered hostess donut package Damn right. would have been your, your snack of choice in the van days. I feel like oh, yeah. also, also you would have, you would have been the, like a uh, thing of milk with one of those like travel cereals. Oh yeah. Those are good. Mm. Like fr- fruity awesome. pebbles. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think would, would be what you choose. Yeah, I'd also eat that all of that right now. Yeah. <laughs> Some things don't change, you know. <laughs> yeah. Classics. Yeah. Um, and for the last couple of questions, it's gonna shift completely away from music and go straight to death row. Boom. So if you're on death row, what would your last meal be with a drink? The first thing that comes to mind, honestly, Dan, is that that freaking Thai food place in New Orleans. Oh yeah. What that was literally <laughs> what? Was that like Thai Thai Unity? No, what was it? I can't remember the name of it. It was the best Thai food I've ever had. Some of the best food yeah. I've ever had. Yeah, right. Or maybe that best friend in in Vegas. That would be a good last meal. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, best friend is like uh, like a Korean fusion restaurant. That'd be really Ooh. good too. I think yeah. for my last meal, I I'm a big breakfast guy. Okay. I think that I would go with like. Like some really good, like over easy eggs, some crispy bacon, some really well cooked hash browns, and some like French toast or something like that. I feel like I also haven't eaten breakfast today, so that might be why I'm saying that. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe. Yeah. All right. Oh yeah. And drinks with those? Mm-hmm. Uh, black coffee. Right. Good coffee. Good. Okay. Not oh, just good, diner good, coffee. Yeah. No good, that shitty yeah. stuff. Good cold yeah. brew. Ooh, All right. solid. New, new, new tradition cold brew. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And if you live in one fictional world for a week, where would you live? I'd probably go Harry Potter, but only if I'm in the magical. Like, I don't want to live in a world where Harry Potter is real, but I'm just like a muggle living in London. Like, that would stink. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, all great. Like, I got, I got to be in Hogwarts, I think would be like a fun place that I could, like, you know, cast some spells and do some shit like that. That'd be fun for a week. Yeah. What house are you? Just out of curiosity. Uh, I mean, every, I mean, I would probably pick Gryffindor because that's like the, everyone's favorite, but I don't know. I have, I've never taken a test. My daughter had a Harry Potter birthday party uh, a couple of months ago and he ended up in Ravenclaw and I feel Ooh. like we're kind of similar. So I probably would end up with her. All right. It's a good house. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh man, I don't know what fictional universe I'd live in. I feel like the fictional universe you'd live in would be like not necessarily something that never existed, just something that doesn't exist now. Like you'd live in like like the world of the like in almost famous. You'd live in like oh, mid yeah. to late seventies rock era shit. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That sounds great. Yeah. I mean, yeah. 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 All right. Yeah. Or Boogie Nights. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, Dirk Diggler. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I've thought of asking the last question. Every single person that we've spoken to have said that it is the most important question. What's your favorite color? I think mine's like a mustard yellow right now. Like, Ooh. like that, like that. Oh. Okay. 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 Yeah. yeah. Like, like a mustardy. Yellow. That's also like a What's... mustard yellow. A little lighter. Um, yeah, I like mustard yellow. I also like green and burnt orange because I have all that all around my room here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The colors warm. Oh yeah! Again, it, that lines up with the almost famous '70s rock vibes. It does. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, Look there. At it. there you go. It's all coming um, together. So, as I said, that's all the questions we have today. Is there anything that you guys like to plug? Yeah, we have yeah. this record coming out tomorrow called Analysis Paralysis. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, check it out. Hell yeah! All right. Yeah. Well, thank you, Styles. Guys, been Alan and Dan from Four Years Strong, and we have been the Good Noise Podcast. <laughs>